All right, what's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for watching. This is Manny here at Unslackable. We got Brandon Laracuenta in the house. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Brandon is the lead actor in the new Party of Five remake that's going to air January 8th on Freeform. I can't wait to take a look at this trailer. Check this out. Ignore it, we're celebrating. Como? You know the drill, move, go, salga. Let's go. All my employees have papers. We're not here for your employees, Mr. Acosta. We're here for you. I don't have any papers. All right, cut. Okay, no. please turn around. No, 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 don't take them. Please, no. No puedo callarme. All we ever wanted was for them to be proud of us. They still need them. The law is limited to truly exceptional situations. Unfortunately, heartbreak is anything but uncommon in these cases. Your Honor, please, don't punish our children for something I did 23 years ago. The law is clear. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Can you be brave? I'll be strong for you, Mommy. Man, I gotta tell you, I am stoked. I can't wait to see the show. Us, us either. I said that we've put a lot of our own hard work and energy into the show, so Hopefully you and everybody who watches enjoys. And the message for sure is going to hit a lot of American homes. So we hope that's so. going to be phenomenal. We hope so. So I have a list of questions from our fans that want to know a little bit more about you. Okay, And your cool. journey as an actor. Yeah. And I got to tell you that um, I, I like the spin that they've put on the new mm -hmm. Party of Five. Again, I think it's a perfect time to, to share that story. I agree. And um, we actually want to know a little bit from you, you know, what the new uh, Party of Five means to you and uh, you know what that's done for you also as an actor. Uh, well, Party of Five, as you said, is a reboot of a very popular series back in the 90s. And uh, uh, the creators of the show were able to basically reboot the show, but with a whole new plot. Uh, I believe in the original, the parents uh, were, were killed in a car accident, and it centered around five siblings who, the, who therefore had to take care of each other in the process of their parents' sudden death. Uh, in the reboot, it's a bit more timely and a bit more political where in the sense that uh, now the parents are now deported rather than killed and they're sent back to Mexico. So the siblings now have to take care of themselves while still relying on their parents and having them accessible, but from, a, from, but from a, a, across the entire country. Mm. So um, as you said, I play the eldest sibling, Emilio Acosta, and he's basically the, he becomes the, the, the eldest, the leader of the household. Uh, despite him not wanting to, he has dreams of being a big musician uh, on stage for the world to see. And due to these unfortunate circumstances, now he has to put his own dreams and hopes aside uh, for the betterment of his family. Got it. So when you decided that you were going to obviously audition for the, for the show, um, how did you know this was the right role for you? Um, well, when my rep sent me the script, uh, that's what kind of hooked me. It was the script. Uh, I read the, the pilot. Uh, and I must have read it about three or four times before the first initial audition because from like the first 15 words, it just captivated me. And I think that's what really drew me to the story. And then, of course, meeting the other actors, uh, seeing how passionate the, the writers and the creators of the show were. But for, for me, it was a script. That's really cool. How selective are you when it comes to, you know, obviously picking the right role to continue to enhance your personal brand of who you are and who you want to be and who you want to portray? Or are you pretty flexible with you know, those type of roles? Um, it depends. I, I, I think the further in my, in my career that I progress, uh, the choosier I can be. Uh, when I first moved out to LA, I just, I was desperate for a job. So I, anything that came my way, I kind of just took. And now that I'm in this uh, very fortunate position, I can be a bit choosier, you know, as to which roles I want to do, what's best for my family, you know, is that going to take me away from them for too long? Uh, do I need the, the mental break? So uh, that's what I kind of look at when I choose a role moving forward. Excellent. So, you know, one of the questions that I was asked also was, you know, how did you get started as an actor? Why did you get started as an actor? And, and how has that journey been for you so far? Um... Despite what people think, it has been a very long and treacherous journey. Um, I know a lot of people just, they see somebody on TV or in a movie and they say, oh my God, he got famous overnight or she got famous overnight. Yeah. <laughs> and it very rarely ever works like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's a lot of hours that you put in, you know, it's the, I, I think just the entire process of, of, of an actor is, is a very strenuous one and I think it really tests your, your perseverance as a person. 
Um, moving out to LA about three years ago, I had done some previous acting in New York City and also in Florida. And moving out to LA was a whole different beast. Um, there are thousands upon thousands of people uh, who are out here for the same thing you are, and very few um, ever get the opportunity to act in something, mm -hmm. uh, let alone TV and film. A lot of competition, yeah. Absolutely. So I think um, one of the best advices that I've received, uh, and I'm, I wish I would have received this a, a long time ago, but uh, I'm glad I'm able to share it with you guys now, was just to stay in line. Uh, my, one, my manager, my current manager now, he told me that everybody has been in line before you've moved out here. And you just now got in line. So eventually, if you stay in line, your name will be called because you'll be at the front of the line. But if you step out of line, if you stop going to classes, if you stop studying, if you stop wanting, if you stop being hungry, you're going to get out of line and somebody else will take your spot. So that's what I try and look at. That's what I try to remind myself every day to keep on pushing forward when times get rough. Uh, but yeah, acting for me actually wasn't my first uh, passion. It was more of a hobby. Growing up, I wanted to be a baseball player. I was very passionate about sports. And it wasn't until after high school that I received a great opportunity to audition for a show at the time that was called KZK Project. It was mm -hmm. untitled. Uh, unbeknownst to me, that show became Bloodline, which has opened so many doors for me as an actor, and I cannot be more appreciative. That's awesome. So, you know, you said something really important, I think, and it's that the, the, the constant <coughs> and never-ending improvement piece of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like stay in line, continue to develop yourself, continue to rehearse, continue to practice, continue to network and mm -hmm. all that. Um, how important is it for you in Hollywood to, to network, to connect with other people? Um, or is it something that just happens by osmosis as you continue to go on, on you know, auditions and things like that? It kind of happens naturally. I, I like to look at, I, I don't use the word maybe network as much as some people do. I, I just try and build relationships and, and build genuine connections because uh, I found that there really aren't that many. It's, it's hard to find genuine people, uh, especially when you live in a big city. So when you meet them, you know immediately. You have that interconnection and you just build a relationship organically. And in life, sometimes it leads to either working together on a project or not, or maybe just building a friendship. And that's just how I like to look at things moving forward, uh, by just trying to build a genuine relationship with people. So, you know, one of the biggest things that I know bothers people is rejection. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, whether you're, uh, you're auditioning or whether you are interviewing for a job, right, um, there's that constant rejection that takes place, especially in your world, right? Because right. you have to go sometimes to 10, 20, 30 auditions, and sometimes there's no callback, there's no, there's no job, there's no anything. How do you deal with that? That's got to be so difficult. Ooh, uh, rejection is tough, and uh, it's something that every actor has to get comfortable with. Uh, I'm still, uh, I've been doing, I've been a uh, working actor for the past couple of years and I'm still not fully comfortable with rejection. I try and be as much as I can, but realistically, it, it's tough, you know, it's tough when you go into 90% 90, uh, 90 of the rooms and you don't get the job. And then finally, you get that 10% and then you celebrate, you have to, you have to celebrate those small victories because they don't come often. Um, but it's, I think it's just getting more and more comfortable with, 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 with being rejected. I mean, that's what this industry is about. You know, you'll, you're not going to get every single job you go in for, but if you keep staying in line, your, your turn will eventually come. And what do you think sets you aside mm -hmm. from other people that are also uh, interviewing or auditioning, in your case, for a role? Um, is it preparation? Is it, is it skill set? Is it mindset? What do you think is the difference maker? I think it's all of the above. I, I really think it is. I think it's the, the first step is preparation. You know, before you go into a read, uh, you know, you must come prepared. Um, I try to look at my job no differently than any other job. You know, if you were to go to uh, a nine to five job working at a desk, you, you would you would you would bring a pen, you bring a paper, everything you need to to give yourself the tools to succeed. So I try and go to every job and look at it like a, like, like another opportunity, a job interview. Uh, f unfortunately for me and for uh, people who are aspiring to be actors. Uh, we are basically contractors who are always looking for work. You know, we don't have a steady job. Luckily, um, you know, if you're ever fortunate to book a series and you might have one season or two or five, however, however many seasons, uh, you're very, very fortunate. But if you're uh, an actor who's a day player, and a day player is actors who just work maybe one or two or three days on a particular show, and they're off looking for the next job. And that was me for, the, for I think, the first three years out in L.A., um, so I just try and remain as prepared as possible, always waiting for the opportunity and being prepared so that when the opportunity presents itself, I'm able to capitalize on the opportunity because not everybody has an opportunity. I mean, I know many friends of mine who have lived in L.A. for about 10 years and don't have any representation. 
So the mm. fact that I'm able to have representation, I try and I, I don't take that lightly. I try and just um, one make myself proud because I hold myself with such high standards, and make my reps proud who have signed me because they took a chance on me, and I would never, I would never want to you know uh, disappoint them or go into a room and not be prepared because they get feedback and they'll know. So when you when you go through the journey that you've been through, mm -hmm. obviously, like you said, you've had some major struggles, right? Um, has there ever been a time where you're like, man, I just can't do this anymore? Like, I, you know, did you, have you ever thought about throwing in the towel? And then what kept you going? Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of times. What kept me going was my support system. Uh, one, from my parents. Uh, my parents have always supported my dreams to be an actor. Um, I've met, like I said, many friends who, who, whose parents have just wanted them to get, as they say, quote, unquote, a real job. Uh, but my parents have always been uh, very uh, inspiring. I've always pushed me to pursue no matter what I wanted to do. Back when it was being a baseball player or a doctor as a baby or an astronaut growing up as a kid, no matter what I wanted to do, they were very supportive. And I think on top of that, um, it's having a good support system and your partner. Uh, fortunately for me, I have a very, very strong partner who's always pushing me to be better, always uh, living her life, uh, being her best, which encourages me to, to live up to my best. And uh, I think having uh, somebody in your corner who inspires you to be better every day is so crucial, especially for somebody working in this industry. So you're saying like, there's, were there times where you knew you had an audition, but you didn't want to go, and then oh, your absolutely. parents were like, no, come on, you're going. Oh, or, absolutely. Okay. There was a point in my life where I was about <laughs> 14, 15, and I, at the point, I didn't like acting because I was ridiculed as a kid growing up uh, for being a theater person. Mm. Uh, uh, for some reason, they have a, there's a bad association if you're in the theater. Uh, and I was called names, and my mom would always say, get in the car, we're going to the audition. I said, I don't want to be an actor. I don't want to go. And I would tell her at, outside the audition, I'm going to ruin the audition on purpose just so I don't get the role. And then, of course, once I went in there, I couldn't do that. My ego wouldn't let me do that. <laughs> so I would, you know, give it my best, and, and half the time I would, I would end up booking the job. And so it was, um, it was my mom who really encouraged me. And also there were some times, you know, back at living in L.A. at home, where I had three, four auditions, and I just wanted to not go to any of them because I was so overwhelmed. Mm. And uh, my fiance now, uh, she encouraged me and said, "Honey, you've got it. You know, you've got it. You're, you're going to go tomorrow, and you're going to crush it." And uh, yeah, so back to a support system. I think it's so important. So you said theater. That's interesting. I didn't know that about you. So that's very different than obviously being in front of the camera. Yeah. Uh, very you, you you have a live audience. You get immediate gratification, right? When you're filming behind a camera or in front of the camera, mm -hmm. you know sometimes months pass and you don't get to see anything. Correct. So what what do you enjoy better? Uh, I think I think they're both great, and and I would love to go back to theater, theater someday because that's where I started. I uh, did some theater as a kid, uh, all the way up until my late teens. Um, for me, I think the biggest t uh, trouble I had transitioning from theater into film was just bringing everything in. You know, on theater you have to project and, and show the entire audience, and on camera, the camera captures everything. You know, so that was one of the biggest lessons I had to learn. And the more and more I've worked in TV and film, the more I've learned that. But uh, I would love to go back to theater someday. I mean, it was, it was my stomping grounds. It's where I started. So uh, one day, I'm sure, I'm sure the opportunity will present itself, and uh, I'll take it. So before you go into an interview, uh, sorry, I keep saying interview because we, and I'm trying to I'm trying to assimilate this also to people in the in the real world, right? Yeah. Where they got, they go through <clears throat> interviews, they don't have a job, they got the rejection, everything like that. So in your case, obviously it's auditions, yeah. but it's the same same, same thing, thing, right? Same thing. Um, how do you how do you prepare? How do you, um, you know, when you're driving, what's your self talk like? Especially if you if you've been rejected multiple times, you're like, man, I got this is my this is my ninth audition, right? I haven't heard anything back. Like, mm -hmm. does that bother you? Do you get yourself into peak state? You know, how do you fix your mindset to just say, hey, I just got to keep rolling with the punches? Like, what is that like for you? Uh, for me, when I first moved out to California and I was not really used to the, the, the rejection, I had heard about it. And, but uh, when you experience it, it's, it's a bit different. And when you go, it's like you said, your ninth, tenth audition and you haven't even heard back or received a call back, you know, it starts to get into your, into your head. And you, you start to think, are my reps going to drop me? You know, maybe I'm not set out for this. I mean, I've had those conversations with myself on the way to auditions. Oh, my God, more times than I can count. Um, for me, my mental escape and what has helped me is uh, anything physical, uh, physical activity, either the gym or hiking or recycling, going for a walk, whatever it is, just to clear my mind. Um, I like to start my day with just doing something for myself. 
That way, uh, whether I go to the audition in the afternoon and I don't get the role or don't hear back, I still feel good about myself because I did something to contribute to my life, something that I can control because whether I get the job is not in my control, but I can do this. I can work out today. I can cook healthy. I can eat healthy. I can be better. I can be a better partner, better son. Those are the things that I can control. So I just try and uh, uh, focus on what I can control and try and leave the rest up to God. Wow. Um, obviously, you had to leave Florida to go to L.A. Mm -hmm. And uh, my understanding <clears throat> is it wasn't easy in the beginning. Um, you know, what, what, what did you have to do? You know, what, were, what did you give up in order to get to that next audition, to get to the next job? How did you humble yourself? I think what I gave up was my comfortability. You know, in life we get comfortable and it, and it feels nice to just, you know, okay, I'm, I'm used to this. You know, this, this chair is really comfy. But I, uh, I had, I had plans of moving out to L.A., but not as soon as I did. Um, I booked a series called 13 Reasons Why, mm -hmm. and that kind of um, – it, it, it kind of sped up the process, you know, that they told me that you needed to be here, you know, because it was a lot flying back from Florida, you know, to, uh, all the way to California to film an episode. It was a lot on me, uh, my body, and also, you know, on, on production. So um, I moved out to L.A., made the jump uh, a lot sooner than I expected, but I'm glad I did. But, yeah, it was just preparing myself for the possibilities, you know, the, un the uncertainty. There's so much uncertainty, especially when you move across the country, to pursue a career that it, it statistically – not many people succeeded. Yeah. Um, it was just, it, it, once again, the support system. It's having people in my corner who, who, uh, who supported me and said, Brandon, you can do this, you know, no matter what. No matter how big my dreams were, they've always supported me, and, and, I, and I've taken that with me. And now, I, I, at first, I didn't believe it myself, you know, but it took people constantly instilling that, ingraining that into my mind, that finally I was able to believe it myself. I think at one point you said you had mentioned that you actually were walking dogs for a living for a while. Oh yeah, wow. yeah. When I first moved out to LA, um, I didn't have a job, and my my now fiance was a server. She uh, she basically supported us financially for a while because uh, I was just a struggling actor, as many people out in LA are, and I didn't want to get a job that would take me away too much from what I had to do. You know, I, I know some jobs they require so much of your attention that you don't have time to then put in. You know, or time and the attention to put into what you're really passionate about. So I searched online and I finally found this company that allowed me to make my own schedule and to walk dogs. And I, I'm a big dog it's person. Like, it's kind of like an Uber for, Correct. for, for a dog walk. Correct. <laughs> People request a dog walk and you get the alert in your phone. You can either take it or not. And uh, I did that for about the first few months out in LA until I actually booked the job. And then after I booked the job, I went back to dog walking. You know, because it's like the, mm -hmm. the hunger is always there, you know. Because you know what, I'm, I was so used to being a struggling actor uh, that, 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 that has never gone away. I still try and live my life as if I was that hungry and struggling actor. Any crazy stories with walking dogs? Oh, yeah, I've got bit a few times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was one time where I, was, I, I walked into a home and this, this small little dog, too, like a, like a shih tzu, uh, would not let me get to him. And I called my, uh, my now fiance and said, honey, you need to get down here. I know you're the big dog person. I cannot get the dog out of the bed. Uh, she came down. We couldn't get the dog out. And, and he, I tried. He bit me. But, uh, <laughs> hey, it's a story, and, and it's, it's those, those types of things that, that have inspired me because as much as I love dog walking, I never want to go back to that. You know, I did it, and I humbled myself, but I, I never want to go back to that. So you're in L.A., you're struggling, you get this app, you're like, all right, I'm going to go walk dogs for a living, right? Um, was there a point where you, you, you were just like, okay, this is ridiculous. This is just way too hard. Like, I'm going back to, I'm going back to Orlando, right? So There were a couple times. There were a couple times where I... I, I I really thought about going back home. That it might be just easier to go back home, but uh, you know, I called my folks back home and they said, "No, you keep on going. We're here to help. You know, with whatever you need. You know, it's back to that support system. You know, it's it's it's, it's so system. so important to have a strong support system. And I'm so blessed and fortunate to have one. Yeah, you know that's key, man. I, you know, when I take a look at my life, right, I've been up through the ups and downs, and As I've we had have. major challenges. And it's it's those good people in your life, the ones that really truly love you that want you to do really well, that don't have any jealousy or animosity or anything like that, mm -hmm. um, you know, against you or, or you know, your, your fiance or whatever, those people that lift you up, that's really, truly the difference yeah. maker. And they're um, ready to find. So when you have them, hold on to them. That's true. That's true. I read something a long time ago. I can't remember who the author was, but they said there's two types of people that you should hang around with. The people that you can elevate to the next level or mm. the people that can elevate you to the next level. Mm. And um, it's hard, right? Because really, if, if you don't fit that, or if the person that, you, that you're with doesn't fit that, and they're constantly dragging you down, it's kind of like a, a bucket of crabs. 
Um, mm. there's, a, there's an Asian supermarket down the street, and every time I go, it, it cracks me up because there's a, a bucket of crabs. There's, there's no lid. It's pretty much full to the top with crabs, <laughs> but none of them fall out because they're all latched onto each other, dragging each other down. So I truly understand and admire you know, the concept of having solid people in your life that really hold you accountable and, and, and lift you up and are there as a support system. That's, that's truly incredible. Absolutely. Um, how, how difficult is it to actually be an actor in the sense of, like, do you have to have incredible memory skills or do you get to cheat a little bit? Do you get to ad lib? Do you get to, you know, what is that like? Uh, it depends. It depends who you're working with. It depends on, on the writer. If, uh, they're very adamant about you know their script and, and they're a very seasoned and experienced writer. Of course, you want to respect you know what they have written because obviously you know they have worked in the industry a lot longer than you and they know what works and whatnot. But uh, then of course, of course, you run across some writers who who give you a script, but it's more of an outline, and then they just let you as the actor create. And uh, I appreciate both, you know, because uh, I've worked with both types of writers and also both types of producers. Uh, so it depends. You, you're going to run into some people who are very, you know, lenient about that, and some who are not. So it just depends knowing who you're working with. But uh, I, I just, I try and respect the writer as much as possible, and try and stay on script. But of course, when, once you're, I guess to say, in the moment, and when you, once you're there, everything changes. You know. So with Party of Five, is that pretty much a word for word script? Or are you able to kind of flex the script a little bit and, and do your own thing, or how does that work? No, the writers are great. The writers give us a lot of freedom. And if there's something, uh, you know, a point that they're trying to make uh, within the dialogue, you know, they will let us know. But uh, for the most part, they've been really, really lenient, and we appreciate that. All right, so obviously your physique is incredible, right? Every time <laughs> I see you, I, 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 I'm like, okay, I got to go to the gym. <laughs> I start doing push-ups and sit ups I'm like, come on, man, this guy looks amazing, right? Um, what is your, your regimen like? Walk us through... You know, your, your diet, how, you know, when you work out, how long you work out. Um, do you have any mentors or do you have any coaches or anything like that that help you stay in, in tip-top shape? So what is that like? Uh, well, I'll start from the very beginning. For me growing up, um, it was my dad. My, my dad, I used to always see him in, in the apartment. We used to live in a very small apartment in New York City. And he would always have like either push-up bars or pull-up bar. And then he would do like 100 laps around our kitchen. Once again, a very small apartment, but 100 laps around the island of our kitchen. And I always saw that. And growing up as a teenager, I, I wasn't really interested in working out. I wanted to play video games, be with my friends, you know, maybe go play baseball once in a while. And it wasn't until after high school that I had gone through some bullying in high school that I got into working out uh, pretty heavily. And uh, that was my outlet. And it's, uh, to this day, it still is my outlet. It's, it's my stress reliever. Um, during filming, I didn't get to work out as much as I would uh, have liked to because of the long hours and stuff. But I always try to find at least one hour a day to do something, you know, physically active, either with that, whether that's push-up bars in my trailer or, you know, running in the treadmill once I got home, you know, after a long day of work. It's, I need it. I need it for my mental health and, and to kind of reset. And it actually charges me. It, it makes me feel better about myself to go into the day that lies ahead. Um, so yeah, it, it, as far as like diet and stuff, it's just, I don't count my calories. I used to do that and I, I felt like I wasn't really enjoying my life. You know, I would go on vacation and I couldn't eat this type of food, this delicacy because I was on a strict diet. So now I just try and monitor uh, what I eat, you know, not many fried foods. I, I try and have a lot of greens in my diet, just a, a very well-balanced diet. And how long are your workout sessions in general? Uh, it depends how busy I am, but if I'm very busy, uh, no shorter than an hour. Uh, but that hour is high intense uh, cardio, high intense you know push up from push ups. It's just circuits. And then if I have some time to to, to spare during my off season, uh, I like to go there and go there for two. It's like a spa day for me. Mm -hmm. I like to go there for about two <laughs> two and a half hours and just kind of play around. It's like a playground. for That's me. your personal time too. Yeah, right? so it is. Yeah, it awesome. is. Now you were in Bright with Will Smith, mm -hmm. and um, I remember seeing some some little clips on Instagram and you were, you know, full makeup and everything with yeah. big nails, eating peanuts and, and almonds <laughs> yeah, and all yeah. that. <laughs> My understanding is that was, that was excruciating in, in the sense of long hours to put all the makeup on. Mm. And, and it's also probably one of the toughest things that you've done, I think, as an actor. Is that right? Absolutely. It was one of the most challenging things I've ever done as an actor. Uh, I had to show up to set uh, super early just to get the makeup put on, the prosthetics. Uh, that took about maybe two to three hours. And then getting it off after, after a long 14-hour day was another hour. So I would get home and I was beat. Uh, and on top of that, it, why it was so challenging was because I had to learn this made-up language that was never, it's not even a thing, it's called Orcish. 
Uh, so on top of that, it, learning Orkish, it, it was it was an experience that I'll never forget, and it was something that has made me a better person, a better actor, a better all around human being. And what was that process like in terms of learning this foreign language? I mean, was it uh, again, was it like a, a script thing? This is exactly the tonality and everything like that, or was it? A little bit more ad lib or a combination of the two, or uh, no? It, it was word for word because they hired this uh, this chat. I can't remember his name, but he's so talented, and he works on almost every every Hollywood film that you could think of that has like mystical creatures. He works on it, and um, he actually developed his own language. He sent me the recording of him saying the language, and also like 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 it written down on like letters and stuff, so I can read it. And I worked on that for weeks and weeks and weeks prior to filming. And uh, actually, when I got to filming, uh, after we finished, he was like, dude, I was so surprised at how, like, spot on you were. It's just because I kept on, you know, pr trying to perfect it, perfect it. Because, you know, I, I wanted to also give him credit and, and give him justice because he put so much time into creating this entire language. I feel like I wouldn't be doing him, you know, his due, due diligence if I just kind of half-assed it. That's awesome. <laughs> now, when you have all the prosthetics and the latex, and it's, it's latex, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what does that feel like? Is it comfortable? Is it uncomfortable? Ooh, hot? It, it's it's hot. I was I, I must have sweat about like a pound of water weight a day. I was wow. constantly hydrating because uh, you couldn't take it off. And if you were itchy, you have to just kind of rub instead of itch it or scratch it. Um, some of the makeup and absolutely. And, yeah. and if at times I felt claustrophobic, I had to just like I was over in a corner. I had to just like do breathing activities and and just talk myself uh, out of wanting to just rip it all off because it's very claustrophobic. I mean, I think Jim Carrey spoke about this when he did The Grinch, oh, yeah. and he felt like he was being buried alive, and, yeah. and I get it. I get it. <laughs> wow. Um, what is your greatest strength? Oh, my greatest strength would be, um, maybe it's because my, my dad was a homicide detective, but I think reading people. Mm. Um, I, I, I kind of can get a sense of uh, what people's intentions are. Uh, within the first 10 minutes of meeting them. Uh, but then, again, that's also my greatest uh, weakness, and that's why uh, having a partner who's kind of the opposite. She kind of wears her heart on her sleeve, and we kind of balance each other out because maybe it doesn't make me so jaded, you know, towards everyone yeah. in this world because, I mean, having two parents who are uh, police officers, it kind of does make you jaded, and it kind of puts you uh, on edge. You know, you think everyone's uh, kind of uh, wants something from you or whatnot, but... Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's my greatest strength, but also my greatest weakness. Absolutely, yeah. It's interesting how that works, right? Because for most people, usually their greatest strength is their greatest weakness. Mm -hmm. um, so what's the best advice you think you've ever gotten in life? Uh, it was the stay in line, but that is in regards to a career. You know, staying in line and not losing your place in line um, because somebody else will take your spot if you ever slip. Um, but just uh, as far as life advice, um, it, I'm not quoting it uh, word for word, but it's nine times out of 10, the person who's the most silent in the room is always the smartest because he's absorbing information. Um, every time I speak with somebody, uh, no matter who it is, I try and absorb as much as I can. I'm a sponge. Um, I try to go into conversations, especially with people who um, are in the same industry as me, who have been doing it a lot longer than me, or who are older than me, because they've been on this earth for a lot longer than I have, so they must know a thing or two more than I do about life in general. So I try and just always stay quiet as, as I can, and only speak when I have something to contribute to the conversation. Uh, but just the, the greatest advice I, I received is just listen. You know, there's nothing wrong with listening. You know, it doesn't make you any less smarter than the person who's out there, you know, talking and has not stopped talking for the past 15 minutes, you know. I find that those people are actually <laughs> the ones who know less. Mm -hmm. It's the ones who are silent who become the masters. That's why we have two ears and one mouth, right? We're supposed to, <laughs> we're supposed to listen <laughs> twice as much as we speak, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's funny. I've been, I mean, I've been envi in environments where you have, same thing, you know, somebody comes in and they're yap, 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 and, you know, they don't know what are the conditions of the people that are in the room, and they might say things that, you know, hurt people's feelings Correct. or that, you know, rub people the wrong way, and had they taken the time to listen and understand what their core values are, they could be a lot more impactful and meaningful. Mm -hmm. All right, so I imagine right now you are living in a hurricane of noise and chaos and distraction, mm -hmm. and you're being pulled in a million different directions. Uh, from all kinds of different avenues, how do you stay balanced? How do you ground yourself? I think it's finding that, like you said, you know, we're living in the noise, and that's why um, 
I try, I really try hard to find that just alone time, that, that, that time where I can just have pure bliss and serenity, um, whether that's reading a book, whether that's meditating, whether that's going on vacation, uh, traveling. Uh, like right now, during my hiatus, um, every, any time that I'm not working, I try and get out of LA and get out of the noise. Because for some reason, just living in a big city, any mm -hmm. big city, you feel like when you're not doing something, you should be doing something. Yes. Uh, even if it's on your lazy days. Like I, my, my fiance actually makes fun of me because whenever I tell her, honey, we're gonna have a lazy day today. She's like, oh great, I know what that means. A lazy eight day hour, for, eight hours at the gym, right? Correct, <laughs> eight hours doing errands, running around, doing laundry. For me, that's a lazy yeah. day. But uh, uh, which is why I think it's so important to, to get out of your house and go travel, even, even if it's not across the country. You know, when we first moved to LA, we didn't have a lot of money. We were, I was a struggling actor, but we would take day trips out over to Malibu. We would uh, uh, drive to Vegas for the night just to watch the sunset rise and fall. You know, it's it, it's those little moments that you can find in, in your busy life that matter the most. Mm -hmm. What's your idea of a great vacation? Like, you know, getting away from the noise. What, what's your cup of tea when it comes oh, to man. traveling? I think it's indulging in a culture that, that, that you are completely unaware of or not used to. It's looking on the map and just going, boop, I want to go there. And you have no idea, what, you've never heard of that country, but you just go there and you try something new. It's, once again, stepping out of your bubble, stepping out of your comfort zone, you know, trying the new foods, trying to learn the language of the common people, mm -hmm. you know, make, make, making an effort. Uh, I went to France last year. I'd never been to France. It's been always a, a dream of mine. And I was so shocked at, at how much French I learned uh, through this uh, app on my phone prior to me arriving there. So I could tell that when I tried, and it wasn't perfect, you know, my French wasn't perfect, but when I tried, I could tell that the, the, the people from France were able, they appreciate it, you know, mm -hmm. they, they truly do. Uh, on top of trying all the food, I'm a huge foodie, and I will never me too. say I no. I love some good food. Oh, me too. <laughs> I'll never say no to food. No matter what it is, because I, I want to try it. If I try it, I don't like it. That's different, but I, I will always try it. Any particular dish that, that stands out that you had in France that you're like, wow, this was amazing? Oh, man. I think we had escargot. Um, I had never had escargot in France before. I've had it on a cruise, but it wasn't the same. Um, what else did we have? I mean, we had so many foods. Sometimes I was eating stuff. I had no idea what it was, but I tried it. Um, nothing that stands out to me because it just, I love all types of food. If you were to ask me what would be my food of choice before I died, it's, I can't choose one. Because there are so many different types of delicacies that are around the, the world. Way, yeah. Oh, my God. It's, it'd, be, it'd be so hard to choose one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had food sometimes where I cry and I get emotional because I can see the hours and work and the preparation that he's put into his craft in order for it to get onto my plate. And I appreciate that. I love, I love experiences that are gastronomically memorable. You know oh, what I mean? Where yeah. you go and you walk away and you're like, man, that was awesome. Yeah. I don't care how much money it costs. As long as you can walk away and it was just like... That was like a pinata of flavor, right, mm -hmm. in my mouth. Like yep. that's <laughs> and it's almost like you eat the food a bit slower, that way yeah. you can savor every bite. That's right. Yeah. And you know, if you think about it, um, I think that going back to noise, right, I think that a lot of the times we forget as people to really enjoy the moment, mm -hmm. you know, to, to absorb the aroma, you know, to, to feel the textures and the taste. And, and I mean, you know, our survival comes from eating, right? right? And I see so many people rushing through through their meals and rushing through their day or on their cell phones and everything like that while they should be just enjoying the moment that they don't do that. So I agree with that. I yeah. agree that you got to just be, be really grounded and, and enjoy the moment. Which is um, why there's a rule in our household that while we're eating, the phones are away. You know, it's, it's distracting. You're not connecting with either your partner or your friend, whoever you're having a meal with, and you're not connecting with the food. You know, you're not enjoying life. You're kind of just like you said, scarfing it down and, yeah. and then going about your day. It's finding those, those little moments to slow your life down, even if it's for 15 minutes and just take, taking a I've, breath. I've had to learn how to do that because, you know, back in the day I was a server also, mm -hmm. and I would have to eat over a garbage can quickly, you know, because there was no real break. No. You're, you're working eight, nine, ten hours straight, and... You know, you just have to scarf a meal down whenever you can. And I've had to, you know, train myself to say, listen, stop, relax, reflect, enjoy the experience, enjoy the moment. Absolutely. That's, that's uh, really, really interesting. Um, what is it like when you are getting yourself in a role, right? So how do you make the script the character? Like, so what's that process like? You just basically memorize the lines and then what happens? How do you, how do you really dive into the character portion of it? Um, I think for me and my preparation process is I just try to understand what's happening in the story first. You know, I, like you said, I read the script uh, a handful of times before I ever go into the first initial audition. And then, you know, once we go into the audition, the director or casting director, whoever's in the room, 
gives you notes and gives you new things to think about. Uh, and then if, if you happen to be fortunate and book the role, you know, then you have a bit more preparation and stuff. But for me, it's, it's, it's never going anything, never going into anything with, with, with already pre-planned on what you're going to do. Because the actor who's acting opposite of you might have a completely different vision and he might flip your world upside down and then you're there scrambling like, so I think for me what I'm trying to say is just remaining flexible. Remaining flexible and just living in the moment and whatever comes to you and whatever happens in the scene happens. And let it occur naturally. Like, like you and I, you and I didn't prepare this today. We didn't, we didn't come into here with a script. This mm -hmm. is all, you know, on the fly. It's sure. the same exact thing. So Emilio in mm -hmm. Party of Five, he's a musician mm -hmm. and um, you've had to learn instruments. Yes. Yeah, I actually had to uh, take some singing lessons, and uh, so my uh, my showers, my my singing in the shower actually came in handy after all these years, and uh, I actually had to learn how to play guitar. Uh, my mom bought me a guitar years ago, and I never, never opened the case. Never, I had to dust it off and dust off the cobwebs because I booked the show. And it's funny because life has a funny way of just. I picked up the guitar about a month and a half before I ever even received or heard of the audition. Wow. Just, by, just because I wanted to. Yeah. And all of a sudden, a month later, I received an audition, and he's a musician. Wow. With a guitar. <laughs> With a guitar. It's just funny. Life has a way of just yeah. presenting itself, you know, gifts and tokens naturally to you. So how effective have you become playing the guitar now? You know what? I'm pretty proud of myself. You know, I, I built up some calluses in my fingers. Um, I, I worked with a great teacher on Party of Five. Uh, her name was Emily. She, she worked with me for countless hours, and God bless her soul, because she had tons of patience with me. Um, and I, I actually got pretty good. Hopefully by next season, I'll get better and better, and we can actually uh, you know, begin to improve on that. But yeah, I'm proud of myself. How many hours of practice are you dedicating to learning the guitar on um, a weekly basis? Right now, uh, since we're on hiatus, not as much as I should. But while we were fine. You're slacking. Yeah. You, you got to be unslacking. I know. Over I know. <laughs> hey, we all have things to work on. And that's, that's right, one of the right. things I have to work on. But um, uh, while I was working, it was a lot. It was when I wasn't either learning my lines or, uh, or um, uh, uh, at the gym or actually working, I was in my trailer playing with my guitar or taking photography. I was always doing something. That's why every time I would get home at night, I was exhausted because mm -hmm. my brain had not stopped the entire day. And then finally, once I got home, I was able to shut off because my body said, that's it, you're done. That's it. Um, I think uh, I saw your Instagram and you're, you're close to like 1.8, 1.9 million followers. Um, for anybody that's out there right now who's trying to build their personal brand on social media and trying to create a following, um, what advice do you have for them? Stay true to yourself. You know, don't be somebody you're not because people can see right through that. Um, you know, just, just whatever you enjoy doing in life, you know, just pr promote it. You know, if it, especially if it's healthy, you know, to, to, the, to your audience and stuff, people will gravitate towards that naturally. But it's when you try and be something you're not or try to imitate somebody else, you know, somebody else is, is already doing it right. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's be yourself. That's what makes you you and that's what makes you unique and that's what makes you stand out. Is there anything in particular that, that stands out um, from your followers that they want to see more of or, or learn more of uh, <clears throat> when it comes to you? This is a question I get a lot because I'm, I'm, I slack, I slack when it comes to social media. I do because I, I like, again, I like to enjoy my life and I forget sometimes to take photos and whatnot. And I, I'm more about worried about indulging in the moment, but, uh, I guess I can share. I always try and share whenever I'm traveling to a different country, I always try and share pictures or videos on either my feed or my story of where I am. Cause I want to share with the people, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm seeing, what I'm eating, you know, what I'm doing. Um, but for me, maybe, maybe it's incorporating a bit more of the, uh, my, my, the physical part of my life, like the working out and stuff, and also uh, maybe a bit more of my family and stuff. So it, it, it depends. But uh, yeah, I definitely slack when it comes to social media because <laughs> I enjoy my privacy. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. I do. Now, do you engage at all? Do you try to comment on comments and things like that? Um, I try. I have a limit on my phone. So if I spend more than one hour a day on social media, uh, my phone locks me out of, of, of all social platforms. Oh, wow. So I have that hour, that hour a day. If I have something to post, I'll go post it, and then I'll close my phone, go about my day, and maybe at nighttime before bed, check again later, uh, and try and like, look through the comments. And just if I see a clever one, I'll, I'll, I'll comment back or write back. But uh, after that hour is done, my phone will let me go in. And of course, I can override it. But the purpose of giving myself that limit was so I don't miss out on life, mm -hmm. you know? I, I don't want to live my life through a phone. I want to live my life through these eyes, you know, that were given to me. 
You know what? I, I read something the other day, and it was brilliant, and it really hit home for me. And it said, people need to stop consuming, and they need to start creating. Mm. And it applies to everything in life, right, if you think about it. So there's so many people that are spending countless hours each day consuming social media, yep. consuming food, for example, people that are not where they want to be with their physique and things right. like that, instead of creating health or creating a connection or creating memorable experiences, right? Like, that's what we really, really should, we should be focused on. And um, I, I, just, I just find that people are getting so distracted nowadays. Yeah. yeah, it's scary, right? So I have a car that's a little bit higher than most cars, and as I'm driving down the street, I see people that are literally driving. It's about 60%, 70% of the cars are the people driving yep. with their phones, looking at their phones, looking at social media, and it freaks me out. So... Um, I love what you said in the sense that, you know, we got to spend more time coming up with systems like you have. So after an hour, your phone blocks off and now that forces you to go create something, you know, to go create a connection or, or go do something, mm -hmm. which, which, is, which is beautiful. I love that. Um, That's why I love traveling to countries that, that there's really no signal because it forces you to, to, to not be on your phone. You know, it, it, I, I will admit at first it felt weird not having my phone in my hand, but now mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so used to it. I'm always like, honey, where's my phone? Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> Because I don't have it on me all the time now. I'm so used to not having my phone that it's become a, a, a habit, a good habit. But at first, I always, I was always my phone, my phone, my phone. Yeah, it's almost like a, like a necessity, right? Like yeah. you feel like you're just you're not you're not whole without it. Yeah, it's scary. It's scary. I think we got to pay more attention and focus on doing, you know, letting it go, like releasing it every Absolutely. once in a while. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I think the social media is once again a curse and a blessing because you miss out on life. But also, there's tons of opportunities that come from it. I mean, people have built uh, empires and brands, you know, successful brands off of social media. So it's, it's you it's know. It's a fine you, balance. Correct. All about balance. balance yeah, correct. Absolutely. Um, so now that you are done wrapping, you, you just wrapped up the first correct, season. Correct, season one. What is the <laughs> marketing of, of the show like right now? Like, what does is, what is that agenda look like? You know, how much traveling are you doing? Uh, well, we... Uh, Freeform and ABC and uh, Disney, they, they have tons of press set up for us. Uh, they, they want us to really promote the show. That way just people watch. Um, so prior to the holiday season, we had some promo. Uh, some news outlets actually came to the set. Uh, we did like a, a live set walkthrough and stuff. And then after the new year, uh, we have a couple things set up in New York City. Uh, and then after that, we'll be flying to Miami and then back to L.A. to do some press there. And I'm sure some more press, either internationally or whatnot. But yeah, they have a, a pretty, they, they like to keep us busy. I bet. Um, if there was one piece of advice that you could give to the youth that are going to be watching this show or to anybody really mm -hmm. that maybe wants to take their life to the next level, pursue an acting career, mm -hmm. do something incredible, what would that advice mm -hmm. be? Um, I think be a sponge, you know, be a sponge. Watch the show, watch any show with an open mind, you know. I think, I think when people go into things with an open mind, uh, they're able to relate, you know, to people who, who they might not normally get to uh, be around, you know. So I, I think it's just having an open mind and, and, uh, and constantly wanting to grow and to learn and, uh, you know, to, to, to never give up. You know, it's inspire others. You know, it, it's so much harder. Uh, for me, it costs me so much more energy to, you know, to be negative than it is to be positive. You know, if you see somebody struggling with, with something, either, you know, they don't believe in themselves or they're going through a tough time, just, you know, give them a, an encouraging pat on the back, you know. Uh, shoot them a text saying, hey, I'm thinking about you. You know, it's, it's those little things that are so important. And, you know, you don't have no idea how much it matters. And, and you know, who knows? You know, I mean, we, we've met so many people because of 13 Reasons Why who have written to us and they've, you know, shared their stories with us. And, you know, it just just... Hey man, I read your I read your story. You inspire me to be better. You know, just keep on pushing forward, and that means the world. Because you know, it meant the world to me growing mm -hmm. up. So for the youth out there, you know, just just be an example for each other, and you know, be an example for other people. Awesome. Well, listen, man, I want to thank you so much for for being here today on Unslackable. Um, I can't wait to to watch the show. It's going to be amazing. I seen a couple of clips, and my I got teary eyed just like that, just <laughs> with the concept of separation, right? So I, I grew yeah. up in a broken home. Uh, you know, with divorce and things like that. And although my family members weren't deported, it, it almost felt like a deportation, right? right? When you go through a divorce and any family goes through a divorce and there's some type of separation and all that. So mm -hmm. I think that uh, the show is going to be really meaningful. I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of amazing takeaways uh, that we can all learn from. And 
I can't wait to see you in action, man. Say, you know, playing your guitar and singing. So. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> and I really, I really, um, you know, bless you guys all, like, in the sense that, you know, the whole cast, the crew, I mean, I want it to be super successful, and I, I think it's just going to be one of those shows that's just really going to touch people's lives, so. Well, we hope so. We hope, we hope just... We hope that people watch, and uh, you know, if it affects the lives of one person, hey, we did our job. That's all we can hope for. That's right. You know, that's it. Awesome. Well, I'll let you get going so you can enjoy your day. Thank you so Thank much you for, for joining me, us. Manny. Thank you guys so much for watching Unslackable. See you the next time. Ciao.